Hello my dear learners, welcome to my video lectures on additive manufacturing. In this session, I will be talking about two processes which is very important in additive manufacturing and they are photopolymerization and material jetting. Before I enter into these processes, I will be explaining you about the different processes and then move on to photopolymerization and material jetting. A brief introduction about me, I am Shamant working as an assistant professor at Global Academy of Technology in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. So let us all now start with our lecture. So the additive manufacturing process has a synonym by the term 3D printing. Even though uh, it has 3D printing, uh, most of them refer to different names uh, for additive manufacturing. They might also call it as uh, rapid prototyping. They call it as additive manufacturing and sometimes, sometimes preform fabrication. So they are all the synonyms used for additive manufacturing. And uh, they are act there are actually lots of individual processes which uh, vary in their method of layer manufacturing. So you all have understood by now that additive manufacturing is the process which happens layer by layer. And uh, there are so many processes uh, which varies uh, one process by another process. So what the American Society for uh, Testing and Materials ASTM did in 2010 was they formulated a set of standards that classify the range of additive manufacturing process into seven categories. So just to uh, differentiate between all the categories uh, or the method of processing each and every part layer by layer they have categorized into seven categories and those seven categories we will be seeing in the next slide. The seven categories of additive manufacturing are photopolymerization, material jetting, binder jetting, material extrusion, powder bed sintering techniques, sheet lamination, and direct energy deposition techniques. There are different methods under these categories, but we are only taking the method of the manufacturing that is actually done. There might be different uh, differentiation in the material jetting process. There might be different variations in material jetting process, but we are only dealing with the main category. So here I'll be explaining all the seven categories of the additive manufacturing process. And in today's lecture, you will be seeing what is a photopolymerization process and then what is a material jetting process. The first method in additive manufacturing process is called as photopolymerization process. And generally, photopolymerization process is the first type of 3D printing method or additive manufacturing method which was actually uh, introduced into the market. And, uh, the commercialized 3D printing you can say it is the photopolymerization process and uh, you can just see the uh, diagram here of the photopolymerization uh, process it consists of a laser uh, machine then an optic and then a scanning galvanometer and then you have a platform and then you have a resin resin is contained in a container you also call it as vat so this process is uh, which is called as photopolymerization uh, process it might also be called as vat photopolymerization because they are using a large container uh, for holding the resin and the name says it is photopolymer so what do you understand by photopolymer photopolymer is nothing but a resin which gets activated when a light falls on it or you can just say the intermolecular structure changes when there is some light which is falling on the photopolymer. So that is why we generally take photopolymers for this particular process. It is taken in a large container according to the size of the product to be built and then it is started. So what does the photopolymerization say? It is a 3D printing technology whereby a liquid plastic is exposed to a laser beam. I told you uh, a photopolymer has to be taken and it has to be exposed for a certain light which is nothing but a laser beam of ultraviolet light during this exposure the light converts the liquid into a solid so this happens so that is why you need to take a photopolymer you can just uh, go and uh, search about photopolymer you will get lot of information understand what is photopolymer and then you will understand the photopolymerization process also very well but i am telling you in brief if you want more knowledge go and search in the website for photopolymers understand about that there are different types of photopolymers used and then understand the uh, process so here 
an ultraviolet light is used to cure or harden the resin wherever required this is very much important so wherever required is once you conceptualize and once you are ready with the 3d model that 3d model is transferred to the am machine so when you are, you have transferred the 3d model to the am machine you need not print all over the container where the liquid is filled so you need to uh, expose or you need to uh, make the light to fall on that particular area where exactly you need to form the 3d part so that is why you need to expose the light wherever required while the platform moves the object downward after each layer is cured so here you have a platform on which the part is built and after each layer is printed after the laser light or the ultraviolet light is exposed to each and every layer then the platform is reduced or it is moved downwards and that is when you can print another layer on the layer which is already printed the steps of the photopolymerization uh, are like this in the first step the photopolymer is held in a large container with a movable platform you can just see uh, the 3d figure here you can see the platform and uh, then you have a large container in which the photopolymer is filled completely uv light or laser beam is directed across the surface of the resin so you cannot direct the laser beam into the resin so it has to be directed across the surface of the resin and when the uv light or laser beam is directed across the surface of the laser beam the photopolymer which is contained in the uh, in the uh, vat or the container it starts to solidify the light source can be moved in x and y axis so whatever the light source you have uh, in the form of a laser and then scanner system it can be moved in x and y direction uh, uh, around the platform or the container the third step involves when the light beam interacts with the resin it gets hardened precisely where the light hits the surface so you have understood by now that as and when the light beam strikes the resin and uh, the data comes from the transfer machine uh, am machine wherein where exactly the 3d part has to be built so wherever the 3d part has to be built there the light strikes in the xy axis and then it starts to solidify that particular resin once the layer is completed the platform lowers down in z axis so this platform which is here it starts to move in the z axis layer by layer and that has to be already set in the machine so that uh, movement of the platform in the z axis should be already set based on the layer by which you have to move down and then this process continues until the entire object is completed so depending on the layers we have already discussed about the layer height and the thickness of the layer in uh, the previous class so depending on that layer whether you want high resolution whether you want low resolution you can decide how many layers a part should have and based on that every layer has to be built and then the process has to be completed so here is a small video you can just see how exactly photopolymerization works see uh, these process is happening you generally call photopolymerization as a stereolithography process now a liquid container is uh, held in the uh, photopolymer is held in the container and then a layer by layer process is happening uv laser which can be moved in x and y direction is also shown there so that is a simple uh, video on which uh, the photopolymerization works so i guess you have understood photopolymerization well these are the sim simple steps that you can follow to understand photopolymerization if you still have not understood uh, please uh, comment in the comment section or write to me at shamant@gad.ac.in so that i can i'll be able to help you out further so you need to understand the advantages disadvantages and applications of the process yes i have uh, made you understand about the advantage disadvantage and applications of additive manufacturing as a whole but for a particular process there will be certain advantage disadvantage and application as well and uh, the advantage of uh, photopolymerization is you can have high level of accuracy and excellent surface finish you can just see the uh, blower here the casing of the blower so it is very high it has very high accuracy and also the surface finish also very good these are the two parts which are actually manufactured using photopolymerization process if you can just see uh, it has very good surface finish 
and then this process is very quick and uh, you can have large build areas and large model weights which can be accommodated in the container because you can uh, make use of the uh, 3d model or you can have that much area according to your container whatever is filled so if you want larger uh, parts to be manufactured then you have to take a container in such a way that it will give you that much amount of uh, uh, liquid that to be filled in the container these are certain advantages the disadvantage part is the process is relatively inexpensive it is very much expensive and then post processing requires more time you always should subject the part after it is being printed for post processing so that uh, extra processing has has to be done on the part and then finally you get the output it requires support structure without this support structure you cannot manufacture the part and then post curing of parts is required that is the disadvantages of the photolithography or uh, you can call it as photopolymerization then the application major applications of this particular process is in dentistry so uh, to uh, produce all the parts which is related to dentistry you can use this process hearing aids and then uh, one of the important uh, application of this is to produce surgical masks and then it finds its application in biomedical engineering so these are some of the advantages disadvantages and applications of photopolymerization or the stereolithography process the next category of additive manufacturing process is material jetting process so this material jetting is uh, an additive manufacturing process which is almost similar to your 2d printers so you have seen uh, the printers right uh, in the form of uh, uh, the you will be using uh, in day to day life uh, for printing uh, lots of uh, documents all those things in a similar manner even the material jetting process also happens this material jetting contains a printhead which is moving horizontally in x y axis and dispenses droplets of a photosensitive material that solidifies under ultraviolet light here again the material whatever is considered should be photosensitive to the light whatever you are using so generally ultraviolet light will be used for the process and it builds a part layer by layer so the material used in material jetting process are thermoset photopolymers which is nothing but acrylics you can just see the figure of the material jetting machine you have a binder you have a binder material and the uh, primary material which you are actually considering for the manufacturing of the part you have two nozzles from which one nozzle uh, ejects uh, binder and the other nozzle nozzle ejects the material and the other important part here is uv system which actually uh, projects the uv light onto the material which is being printed and then you have a printed part you have the build platform the build platform moves down in z axis layer by layer so that is already set in the machine material jetting process the steps involved in material jetting process first step the liquid resin whatever you are considering has to be heated for 30 to 60 degrees celsius to achieve optimal viscosity for the printing so if you do not heat it then uh, the viscosity might not be achieved and you might not get a good print then the print head travels over the build form build platform the second step print head should travel over the build platform and when it travels over the build platform hundreds of tiny droplets of photopolymer are jetted or deposited to the desired locations so the build platform is uh, making the tiny droplets of photopolymer to be jetted onto the desired locations and after it is uh, jetted onto the desired location now the uv source comes into picture the third step the uv light source which is attached to the print head cures the deposited material which solidifies it and creates the first layer of the part you can just see here the figure you have uh, the nozzles which are uh, jetting the required material in the desired location and then you have a uv curing lamp so which is after the jetting of uh, the material is completed the uv light comes in contact with the jetted area and that solidifies the material whatever has been applied on the build platform once that is done after the layer is complete the build platform moves downwards one layer height and the process repeats until the whole part is completed so this is how a material jetting process actually carries out now uh, we'll just see how exactly the process happens 
so you can just see the video here uh, the material uh, is being jetted once the material is jetted uv light uh, comes in contact with the material and then it solidifies the part so this is how the material jetting process takes place advantages disadvantages and applications of uh, material jetting process the first advantage is that the it has it generally has less wastage of the material and uh, one more advantage uh, that you can get out of material jetting is it can print colors so the process allows ma multiple materials and colors under one process so you can have uh, multiple uh, colors you can just see one of the uh, product which is manufactured using material jetting process here are helmets which is used for cycling you can see the colors there so that is the major advantage of this material jetting process and then it has high accuracy of deposition of the droplets depending on the accuracy of the x and y axis of the print head if that is not accurate enough then the deposition of droplets will not be according to your uh, 3d uh, print instructions whatever you have given to the machines major disadvantage materials are limited to polymers plastics and waxes only few materials can be used in this particular process most of the materials are not suitable with this material jetting process and then parts produced have poor mechanical properties and are very much brittle so brittle if the part is brittle there are chances of the material or a product which can break easily and life of the product will be very much reduced and it requires support structure as in the previous case that we have discussed on photopolymerization even material jetting process also requires support structure without the support structure the part cannot be built properly and application it's it finds its, its application in a dentist uh, dentistry or the dental domain and then uh, major application is in medical industry and the jewelry industry so here you can see a couple of jewelry which is manufactured by the material jetting application or the process so most of the 3d printing process are actually uh, getting into the jewelry industry for manufacturing complex shapes of jewelries and also in a very quick time and uh, for better ease of application of the process so this is about the material jetting process this is all for today's lecture we have understood how exactly the photopolymerization works as well as how the material jetting process works thank you all for listening to my lecture if you like this video lecture kindly share it among your friends like on the youtube channel and also subscribe to my youtube channel for more videos on additive manufacturing as well as other mechanical related lectures please uh, go through the youtube channel thanks a lot thanks for watching